Good morning. Good morning, explorers. Good morning. Welcome to another segment of Be an Explorer. I am back outside today. I'm Ann Lewis and I'm coming to you from my backyard in Pierre, South Dakota. Be an Explorer, uh, we meet every Tuesday and Thursday and talk about how we can explore our backyards using our simple tools of observation, um, our minds, maybe occasionally something like a thermometer. A lot of us in South Dakota and South, uh, the US and around the world are spending a lot of time at home. So we're learning how to nature in place today. So since I'm outside, I can't see the chat stream. So I can't greet you. Um, those of you who are joining my regular families. So good morning, I'll go back and read the chat stream afterwards. As we start out every Be an Explorer, I like us to practice our observation skills that we have uh, to go outside, look at the sky, use your body thermometer, look at the sky for the clouds, use your body thermometer to read the temperature and look at the wind, what's happening with the wind. Listen for different sounds, um, traffic of course. I'm hearing some birds. I believe it's a finch. If you go to allaboutbirds.org, that has a lot of information about common backyard birds and exotic interesting ones. For here in South Dakota in my backyard our cloud cover is fog stratus. We look we talk about pillows and blankets um, and high wispy thin clouds and so today is definitely a blanket cloud day. I am not seeing anything blow in the wind. Well, maybe some grasses over there, some dead grass, but hardly any. We look at grasses, we look at leaves, we look at little twigs, we look at branches, little branches, big branches in the whole tree. And today nothing is moving. So no wind today. Body thermometer, mm, it's chilly. I've got shirts and fleeces and my, my heavy jacket on, but I'm out here by my pond. Let me go ahead and turn to my pond and you can see no ice. So somewhere between 30, uh, 30 is hot, 20 is nice, 10 is chilly, zero is ice. Somewhere between 10 and zero, I would say. I do have my thermometer, but today I'm not going to use it because I'm using it to measure the temperature of my pond. And I know not everybody has a backyard pond, um, but I thought I would share my pond with you today and talk about some of the things that I'm seeing. If you saw our promotion on Facebook or YouTube, you'll notice that we're talking about water critters and those, uh, Globe books with Simon, Anita, and Dennis that we've been reading occasionally. They go on a field trip with their class and they go to Willow Creek and they look at the creek. And one of the things they do in the creek is they take the water temperature because they are going to a field trip in the spring and they had been in a field trip in the fall and they brought their journals with them and they look at what happened and what they recorded in the fall and they compared it with what they were finding in the spring. And one of the things they recorded was the water temperature. So I'm looking at the water temperature. My thermometer has been in there for, since I started talking to you, so for about four minutes, five minutes. And the water temperature is 
about four degrees Celsius. And four degrees Celsius, this is just extra, uh, is a really interesting temperature because that's the temperature at which water density changes. You know how ice expands? Well, at four degrees Celsius, water starts expanding as it gets cold. Up until then, it's contracting, just like everything else when it gets cold. But at four degrees Celsius, the density of water begins to change. So I cannot see that with my eyes. Um, so we just have to take the thermometer's word for it. So the thing I want to talk to you today about um, are my snails. And our pond, and I'll just kind of bring this over so you can just, is just, is really not a fancy pond. It's just really basically a small swimming pool um, that we put some rocks around and we filled with water and we have some bubblers in there. And we like to come out here, uh, those of you who've watched this for a while, my explorer buddy Dawson and I, we like to come out here in the summer and. The birds like to drink out of it. Uh, what happens though is because we're underneath the tree, I don't know if you can see the tree behind us here. There we go. Uh, it gets filled with leaves and so we have to clean it out. So we're about to clean out our pond. And as we were cleaning out, as we started rooting around in it, well actually as my husband started rooting around in it, we came upon some snails. And if we go to our snail cam, Let's see, we can get the snails in there. Uh-oh, is our snail cam frozen? There we go. And these snails live in the pond. Now, what's really interesting is that we never put snails in the pond. I'm not quite sure where they came from. If I had to guess, it would be be that they came in on little eggs on the bird's feet and as the birds came into um, the pond to drink, the eggs came off. That's what I would guess. So I collected these last night and because uh, I was worried that the pond would be frozen, I wouldn't be able to get at it. Water is a habitat. A lot of things will live in water. These snails live in water. They do okay outside of water. I'm going to put them back, wait for the truck to go by. I'm going to put them back when I'm done um, because they're happiest in the water. But other insects live in the water too. And sometimes they spend their whole lives there. Sometimes they're just there uh, as eggs and larva and pupa. And then they, when they become adults, they come out. Sometimes they're just eggs to larva to adults. Um, so water is a really interesting habitat for insects. I don't think I have any other aquatic insects in the pond right now. Uh, one of the insects we're very cautious about, Sarah, if we could go back to the split cam, we'll leave it on me and the snails. One of the insects I'm really cautious about is mosquitoes because mosquitoes will come and lay their eggs in our pond and we do not want that. Uh, mosquitoes carry West Nile and, um, Malaria, not here, we're too far north, but you know, I just don't want to get mosquito bites when I'm sitting out. So we buy these special dunks that are biological material that will kill the mosquito larva, but not the other insects. So we treat our ponds for mosquitoes because we don't want mosquito larva. But the other kinds of things like snails, are they escaping? It looks like they might be. Um, we do want and one of the interesting things, I'm gonna pick up one of these snails. Sorry, buddy. Is snails can tell you a lot about the water. And when you look at a snail and you, your famous snail, um, 
when you hold it so the pointy type side is up and the open side is down and you're looking at it, the side that's open will be either right or left. Now, I realize we're kind of all catawampus because of uh, the cameras and everything, um, but this snail has a right opening. So it's open on this side of the snail's body, which is the right side as I'm looking at it. And that means this snail is a gill breather instead of a pouch breather. Uh, normally, oops, he's really twisting around. Can you see that? Normally, snails that would be in a backyard pond would be a left side opening or like they have a pouch to breathe, almost like a lung. So left lung pouch. So I'm kind of surprised to see the right-sided snails come. You can see, I have, we have a rock to rim. You can see the snails really like to hang out on the rock. So you can see some big ones and you can see some baby ones down here. So we'll probably take this rock when we're cleaning out the pond, when it gets nice next week and put it someplace so we can put more snails in our new pond. Other types of insects that you might find in the water as larvae, which is just their juvenile or their kid stage, are dragonflies and damselflies. And the difference between a dragonfly and a damselfly is which way their wings are going. Sometimes if this is their body, their wings go this way and sometimes they go with them. So, um, mayflies, those just come out and as adults, all they do is mate and then they die. So mayflies are only alive for a very short amount of time. So those are things you can look for this spring, later on in the summer are these different insects and know that they come from water somewhere around your house. And think of the mosquitoes too, they come from the water too. So if you have uh, standing water around your house, you might wanna empty it out. And if you have some sort of decorative feature like my pond, use a mosquito dunk. I'm seeing the snails uh, living large here. Oops, so if we read our uh, Globe Explorers book, we can see how Simon, Anita, and Dennis use their Explorers journal to talk about their discoveries at Willow Creek. And I hope you are still keeping your Explorers journal. If you haven't done an entry lately, uh, go ahead and do something. Get outside and find something to draw. Maybe um, find a branch that's just beginning to change. Uh, that has little leaves on it and it will grow and grow and grow. And go out every week or every other day and see how those leaves are changing. So lots going on. Those of you who joined us yesterday, we talked to Trevor, Han Trevor Hance from uh, West Cave Outdoor Learning Discovery Center in Austin, Texas. And he was saying how glad he was that if he had to be at home for a long time, it was glad he was this time of year because he could get outside and in the backyard, there's still things to see. So thank you everybody for joining me once again to be an explorer. I'll go back and read everybody's comments later. Tomorrow for Family Citizen Science, we're gonna be talking about iNaturalist and another little, uh, like the little brother app of iNaturalist called Seek. And we'll be talking to a man named Matt Larson Daw all the way from England. And he's gonna tell us what he's seeing over there. This is Citizen Science Month. Citizen Science is where you and your family can go out and make observations that scientists use in their research to learn about the world. Scientists can't be everywhere. So they're asking people like you and me to help collect data for them. So. 
As long as you have permission to use the app from your parents, uh, we'll talk about some other apps later in the month or maybe even early in May. And um, you can be a scientist and an explorer. Stay safe, stay curious, and go explore. We'll see you tomorrow.